If you use Microsoft Excel to analyze data at work, you know, use pivot tables and charts and things like that, but you need more power. You are interested in answering more complicated, more impactful business questions with data, then this is the video for you. In this video, I'm gonna go through my top four data mining techniques using Microsoft Excel. And what's so awesome about data mining with Excel is that any professional can do it. And, and I mean any professional. I don't care if you work in HR or finance, marketing, supply chain, IT, product management, whatever. These techniques are useful for any professional that wants to have more impact at work with data analytics. So what I will do is I will go through my top four techniques for data mining with Excel in this video. Just so you know, I have tutorials, in-depth tutorials for all four of these techniques on my channel. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video, but what I will do is reference the appropriate video that I have on my channel at that particular point in time, just in case you're interested in diving deeper and learning more about the techniques. So let's go ahead and get started with number one on the list and that is exploratory data analysis. So here I am in Excel and I wanna show you what I mean when I talk about exploratory data analysis. Typically what this means is grabbing a data set and formulating some sort of very interesting or potentially impactful business question. And to really exemplify this, what I've got here is a famous data set. This happens to be a machine learning data set, by the way, just so you know, around Titanic passengers. And the question, the relevant and impactful business question with this data is, hey, are there any patterns in the data that are highly associated or highly predictive of survival? Even though this is a Titanic machine learning data set, don't think of it that way. Just think of it as a proxy for customer data. And let's say the example question you have is, hey, is a customer going to convert to paying? Is a customer going to buy more? Is a customer going to churn and leave us for a competitor? These are the types of awesome questions that you can answer using Excel and exploratory data analysis techniques. And I'm just gonna briefly show you some examples of what I'm talking about. So I've got the data here, and the business question that we're trying to answer is, hey, what types of patterns in the data are highly predictive, highly associated with survival? One of the first things that you can do is create what's known as a histogram, which is a particular kind of data visualization. And you can see an out of the box histogram right here. And these are useful, but what's even better is when you actually use a pivot chart as a histogram, and what you get is a much, much more powerful data visualization to help you answer questions. Now check this out. So you can see here, I've got the ages of the passengers on the Titanic, and the colored bars here in the histogram tell you the orange are the survival rates, and the blue are for the folks, unfortunately, that didn't make it. But here's the thing, check it out. You can use these slicers, and you can say, look, I'm interested in only females or males, and only males, let's say, females in first class. I mean, look at that. Look how it just changes and it shows you that, wow, females in first class overwhelmingly survive. This is the kind of exploratory data analysis that isn't commonly done by most Excel users, but is totally easy to do in Excel and super, super powerful. But there's more. So for example, there's another type of data visualization known as a box plot. What this shows you essentially is, is what is the range of age values in the data set based on whether someone didn't make it, they perished or they survived. Powerful stuff, right? Because what you can see here is, okay, generally speaking, those that survived, they kind of skewed to be younger. Imagine that. And then lastly, and this is just one more example, is a scatter plot, which is you know just these dots. But notice what I've done here is I've color coded these dots here to represent whether or not someone survived or perished. And what you can see is the age on one axis and the family size. How many people? We're traveling together on the Titanic. And what you can see here clearly is that it's kind of a mixed bag, right? It's like, okay, if your family size is big and your age is young, maybe you have a tendency to perish, which might make some sense based on the nature of the data. But all that to say, exploratory data analysis is the fundamental thing if you wanna up-level your data analytics game. And in Excel, it is wildly easy. And as I mentioned, I have a whole series of tutorials on exploratory data analysis. I'll put the playlist up here. This is number one on the list. If you're only going to do one thing out of the four in this video, this is the thing to do, exploratory data analysis. So after exploratory data analysis with Excel, which is super awesome, the next thing on the list, number two on the list, is market basket analysis. 
And if you're not familiar, market basket analysis is a quintessential data analysis technique used in the grocery store and retail industries. However, it is super powerful. You can do all kinds of things with it. So let's pop over to Excel and let me show you what I mean. Here I am in Excel. And once again, I'm going to be using the Titanic data set here as the frame of reference. And that's only to cement this idea that you can use market basket analysis in Excel to mine all kinds of data and generate new and powerful insights. So once again, in this particular case, what we're interested in is trying to find out what characteristics of individual Titanic passengers were highly associated with survival. And once again, just think of this like customer data and the number of questions you can answer with market basket analysis is immense. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore most of this because I have a tutorial on my channel, which I will put right up here for you to take a look at. And what you can see here is an example of market basket analysis in action. And what I've asked Excel to do for me in this market basket analysis is to say, look at survived. All right, I want you to hold that steady. I want you to find out everything else to the left of this particular cell that is highly associated with the thing in the cell, in survival in this case. Market basket analysis is super powerful. What you can see here is I'm only asking Excel to find the top two things that are highly associated with survival, but I don't have to only have two. I could have three or four or five. This is where market basket analysis becomes really, really super powerful. And what happens in this particular analysis is that Excel said, okay, Dave, I will find the top two things based on the data that we saw in the table that are highly associated with survival. And they are being an adult female. And what this tells me way over here at this point here, the lift, this, <laughs> this, is what's, this is what's so awesome about market basket analysis. What this tells me is based on the data that I have, that if you're an adult female, you are 1.99, basically two times, twice as likely to survive. This is the power of market basket analysis in action. And it doesn't have to be Titanic passengers, right? It could be anything. So for example, if you work in product management, you could list the features in your software application and say, okay, of all these different combinations of software features, which ones are most highly associated with people not only signing up for our software service, but also stick around and pay us month after month after month for a long period of time. There are scenarios in HR, in manufacturing, in logistics, you name it. Market basket analysis is a wildly, wildly useful tool. So that's why it's number two on the list. And not surprisingly, once again, I've got a tutorial for this up here if you're interested in learning more about market basket analysis. But this is the thing you should tackle next after exploratory data analysis. After market basket analysis, number three on the list, the third thing that you might find super, super useful as a professional looking to have more impact at work with data is cluster analysis. And in particular, the K-means algorithm for cluster analysis is easily implemented in Excel and is quite powerful. And to kind of give you some sort of idea of what goes on with cluster analysis, let me flip over to PowerPoint for a quick intro. This is a contrived example to be sure, but it illustrates the idea of cluster analysis. The idea is that you have a pile of data and what you wanna do is you wanna say, look, are there any patterns in the data? Are there any associations? Are there any groupings in that data that maybe I'm not aware of that might be potentially useful? A quintessential example of using cluster analysis is what is known as customer segmentation. So for example, you have a big pile of customer data and what you wanna do is, group them into groups and then take a look at those groups and say, what are the characteristics of this group that makes it different from this group? And is this group more likely to buy or more likely to do X, Y, Z, that sort of thing. So cluster analysis is super useful, but it goes way beyond just customer segmentation. For example, in supply chain, using cluster analysis in logistics is an awesome, awesome technique. So this is a contrived example. And what you can see here obviously are Clusters, right? Two obvious clusters, one right here, one right here. But what's super interesting in cluster analysis is actually situations like this, this data point right here. And just, just to be clear, this is a very, very contrived example because notice that I'm only using two dimensions here, an X axis and a Y axis, two dimensions. But in a real world cluster analysis scenario, you might use four dimensions or five dimensions or seven dimensions. And by the way, just think of a dimension as a column of data 
in an Excel table. The more columns that you're using, the more dimensions you have. And then of course, obviously it gets more and more complicated to find these groupings effectively. So we're just gonna use two dimensions here because that's basically all PowerPoint can handle. <laughs> so what's gonna happen is, is that we would run a k-means clustering algorithm on this data. And obviously it's gonna find this cluster and this cluster. But the question is, what's gonna happen to that data point right here? What's gonna happen to the data point? And if you run the k-means algorithm, you see here that it decides that eventually it becomes an orange dot. So it becomes part of this cluster right here, which is colored orange, and you've got this one down here. Just in case you're curious, this big orange dot and this big green dot, they're cluster centers. I go into detail in the video up here on k-means cluster analysis with Excel to explain what these mean in more detail. For our, our purposes right now, we don't care. What happens is that k-means iterates through the data over and over and over again until it finds all the data and assigns it to all the clusters that you specify. This is a super, super useful algorithm. K-means is very easy to implement in Excel. All you need is basic functions, tables of data, and just a little bit of Power Query. And like I said, I've got a video up here. This tutorial goes into how you can do this in depth. Cluster analysis is a wildly useful skill to have, and which is why it's number three on the list. K-means clustering, wildly useful. That's why it's number three on the list. The last and final technique, number four on the list, is naive Bayes classification. Now, if you're not familiar with classification, just think of it as a way of analyzing your data to create a predictive model that allows you to decide whether something's good or bad. Yes, no, approve, deny, that sort of thing. And in this particular case, what I'm gonna show you is a naive Bayes classifier that allows you to predict whether or not an SMS text message is ham, a legitimate text message from one of your friends or family members, or it's spam, <laughs> something bad, right? Hey, buy this or whatever it might be. So let's flip over to Excel and let me show you a naive Bayes classifier in action. All right, here I am in Excel where I've implemented a naive Bayes classifier. And as with all of these techniques, here's my tutorial video up here in case you wanna learn more about Naive Bayes. Now, all we're gonna look at is this particular table of data right here, which says, okay, I've taken my existing data, I've used Excel to build a Naive Bayes classifier to determine whether or not a text message is ham or spam, ham being good, spam being bad. And what this table shows you is, hey, if a new text message comes in, with this particular words in it, or if this message came in with this particular words in it, whether or not it is ham or spam. And what you can see here are the predictions based on the text messages that came in. So for example, call claim you get home. That is based on the data that we had to build this classifier. We are gonna predict that that's ham, that that's legit. However, if we get a message like this, text call free claim mobile, you can get love home. <laughs> I know, I know. The video, the tutorial will go into more detail. This is a contrived example, but just, just roll with me on this. So if you got this particular text message based on the data that we had to build this classifier, we would predict that that's actually a spam message. And by the way, just so you know, this is the same type of tools and techniques that are used for email as well to determine whether or not you're getting junk or spam email and put it automatically in your junk slash spam folder. Even though... Uh, a spam filter, this is what this is called, by the way, a spam filter, is a classic use case for naive base classifiers. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be this. It could be, for example, uh, is a customer going to churn? Is a customer going to leave us for a competitor? Yes or no? You can use a naive base classifier to predict that sort of thing. This thing is wildly useful. The number of business scenarios that boil down to a yes, no, approve, deny, legitimate, fraudulent kind of scenario, it's immense and it's across everything. HR, HR, it's a great example. So in HR, you could say, for example, I wanna create a naive based classifier that predicts whether or not a good employee is going to quit and go to work for one of our competitors, which is kind of like a customer churn scenario if you think about it. That's the kind of thing that you can do with your data in Excel with this technique. Naive Bayes is awesome. That's why it's number four on the list of cool data mining techniques that are wildly useful for any professional.
Okay, I'm going to put up a couple more of my videos right here just in case you're interested in learning more about what's possible in terms of more advanced analytics with Excel. There you have it, my top four data mining techniques in Excel for any professional. If you want to up-level your data analysis game, these are the things to focus on. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.